Welcome uh, out here to our Smash FM ambassador profile because we're out here at Narrabunong in particular because touring with our one of our ambassadors. Because her name is Jamison, she's from the Western Athletics uh, Club and she joins us right now. Thanks, Jamison, for joining us. Thanks, Will, for having me. It's my pleasure. Well, um, tell us how did you get involved in athletics and why did you choose the sport? So it was basically I was running down the hallways with my sister and we just used to compete and race each other down and. I thought, you know what, I really enjoy racing and running especially. So I talked to my parents and thought, why not go down and try a little athletics? So we headed down to Brimbank and that's where it all started. I enjoyed it. I was getting good. I was improving and I just loved it. So I went from there and kept growing and stuck with the sport. Um, obviously, uh, I have to ask, what part of athletes are you involved in uh, and for our listeners who have no idea what that is um, to obviously just explain that to us as well. Yeah so I'm a heptathlete which means I do seven events over two days so I start off on the first day with 100 meter hurdles then I do high jump followed by shot put and then 200 and then the second day we come back and start with long jump then do javelin and then finish with the 800. Our, all those seven events that you just mentioned um which one is your favourite? Oh, my favourite's probably between high jump and javelin. They're pretty close at the top, but I also like my 800 too, which is unusual, but it's quite up there. Now, I know this year in 2018 that you've uh, smashed a couple of your personal best times in, in all those events. Um, tell us about those ones in particular and what's, what is the current personal best? Uh, my personal best point score for an overall heptathlon is around 4,700, which is absolutely huge. I didn't think I'd get that high because this year I moved up an age group, which means everything else moved up. So I had to use heavier shot puts and things like that. So it was really good to beat my PB. As well as that, I smashed my high jump PB this season, jumping a meter 176, which was just crazy huge. But I was really proud of that. And then my other huge PB was my 800, which I dropped by oh, at least four seconds in the season, which is an amazing achievement. I was really proud of that and worked hard. So they're definitely my biggest, proudest moments of my PBs this season. Now, one of your highlights this year, which we spoke on the show uh, about a month ago, was your trip to America. Um, tell us a bit about that experience. And I think my memory says me correct, it was your second or third time you went over there. Uh, and be involved in that. Um, tell us a bit about this year's uh, experience. Yeah, so this year was my third time over in America and it was just absolutely amazing. I had a few goals going over, but my main one was to be a good team captain because that's what I was selected as, as well as to compete. So I went over there and mentored a few of the younger athletes who was their first time, which was really amazing. And then as a bonus on top of that, I managed to bronze medal in the high jump, which is an open women's high jump over there at the premier indoor competition for high school athletes and basically equaled my PB at the time because I hadn't jumped a metre 76 then, but I had jumped over a metre 70, which was my goal and managed to snag a bronze medal with that. So that was really exciting. Uh, how, when you got it, um, how special was that and how rewarding was that? It was extremely rewarding. I'd worked for it for so long. I'd been there three times and the first two times I was there, I wasn't too happy with how I went. So this time, even though I was there as a team captain and that was my main role and what I was really focusing on, I was really secretly hoping to perform at my best. And luckily I managed to on the day and it really paid off. And I felt like all my hard work had come together at the right time and I got a huge reward for it, which was really exciting. Um, now, obviously, you had to bring that medal back home. Yeah. Uh, uh, how, I guess how difficult, well, I guess how special was that to uh, bring that medal home? And obviously, how difficult was it to get past the US uh, borders to get to Australia with the medal? Oh, you always get a little bit worried because you know it's metal and they're like, is it going to go off in the detector? Are they going to pull it up in the x ray? But no, nah, it gets through pretty easily. But it's really proud coming home and showing my parents and all my coaches and then you know showing the rest of my family what I've achieved and showing how it's paid off and how proud I am and that's really exciting getting to be able to show everyone what I got from competing at my best and doing what I love. Now um, obviously from that onwards uh, obviously you came and compete back home here in Melbourne um, and smashed pretty much every PB possible uh, yeah. in your events. Um, did that 
journey in the US helped you prepare for what was coming up in Melbourne the couple of weeks later? Yeah, it somewhat did. So the comp in Melbourne was my nationals, which was my other really huge focus of the season. That's where I managed to run my 800 PB and do my high jump PB as well. And as well as that, I did two other individual PBs in the events and then the overall point score PB. But it definitely made it a little bit challenging with the travel and then coming back and having to, you know, recover my body and get back into some hard training before I competed. But, you know, it definitely gave me some background training and even the altitude of America is really different. So it gave me that fitness level and it was just a good experience coming over there and then learning how to recover so quickly for another major competition, which was a big learning curve and it paid off too. So I was really happy. Now, um, what's your next future ambitions in this sport? So the next one would probably be making another Oceana Games, which I made a couple of years ago now. There's one coming up soon, but they're around every couple of years. So hopefully I can make another one of those. And then after that, obviously trying to make a World Junior Comp, or sorry, World Junior Games, and then hopefully getting even bigger to a Com Games or an Olympic Games pretty far in the future. But I reckon it's on the table and I'll keep working hard and see where it can all can take me and as well as that, a few national state medals along the way would be great, but it's all a work in progress, trying to make one national team and then progressing from there, seeing how much higher I can get until maybe, hopefully, the Olympic Games one day. And tell us a bit about your coaches. Yeah, so my main coach is Darren Clark, who's just gives so much time and effort for all of his athletes and has made a huge impact in my athletics career. It's extremely handy that the school I go to, Marabon on College, he coaches at, which means I can work my study timetable around my training timetable as well, make sure they fit in really well and with all my gym sessions and then training after school so I still have a lot of time to study. And But he's great, the amount he does for us with travelling to all our comps and giving us his time and his effort when he has his own family and life too. We, you know, I just really appreciate everything he does and could never thank him enough for it. He's just really made me into a great athlete and I'm proud of who I am. And how important is your, your family and obviously your parents being obviously you got your dad here um, on the other side of the camera? Yeah, my family is so supportive. I couldn't do anything that I have done today without them from paying for all my expenses to driving me interstate and internationally for competitions and taking me to endless comps and training sessions and even just the support I give me. It's not always easy. You have your ups and downs and they're always there to support me and help me through it. And for that, I'm forever grateful and couldn't thank them enough for it. Now... Let's talk a bit about your local club, uh, Western Athletics. How important have they been and how special is it to, I guess, what did it mean to represent Western Athletics? Western Athletics have been great to me. They're always so supportive of everything I do, make sure, you know, if I can't get to a training session or something with my coach or if my coach isn't at a comp, they're always willing to help me out and do all that sort of stuff. As well as financial support, they're always willing to help me out there, do whatever they can to in a way show me off a bit to help me get some support when I need it they're just very supportive and very open they create a great athletics environment and made sure I felt very welcomed when I started senior athletics and made sure I knew my way around and what they're doing if I ever have any questions or whatever I need they're always so willing to help their support has really meant a lot to me and has really shaped me into a great athlete that I am today. Now I have to ask this question obviously being an athlete Uh, For our listeners out there who have no idea how much time you do, um, how many hours per day do you train? Train a few. Usually it's around an hour and a half, but sometimes I add a gym session in as well. So I have a gym session and back it up with a training session, which it can get up to two hours, which isn't really too long of a time in one day. But then I train, you know, Oh, five days a week in winter and six days a week in summer and once the comps start the comps go for long days sometimes all day sometimes over all day two days so it's a fair bit of time but it's easy to manage around and work it out properly to manage my studies too but it does accumulate and get to be a lot but I love it so uh and what is your I guess preparation or I'm gonna add this bit as well do you have a pre-competition superstition I have a couple my main one is that before every jump or throw or run I always jump up and down give my legs a bit of a slap and tighten my ponytail Uh and then I get ready to do whatever I do and get in the blocks or get my shot put and go 
that's my main one. Sometimes I have specific headbands I'll wear for certain events. Like this season, there was a white Nike headband I always had to wear, especially for 800s and things like that. Those change a little bit, but that's my main one. I always tie my ponytail and jump up and down before I go and do whatever I need to do. Now, what would be your advice to our listeners out there that should, or any of our viewers who's watching this, that should uh, get involved in the sport of athletics? Do it because you love it. I love the feeling of running around and the adrenaline of competing, which I know nearly every athlete does and many people love to do as well. So find what you love to do. And if it is in the sport of athletics, just follow it, go with it. It's a great social sport. It's a supportive sport. There's so many people around you, make so many friends. It's so much fun. So just give it a go and see what comes out of it. Do you have a favourite athlete that you, that you look up to? Oh, there's a... F- few athletes I suppose I look up to obviously Sally Pearson is a great legend in the sport of athletics the amount she's worked for and the amount she's been rewarded because of that even Morgan Mitchell is a great one she's had her ups and downs and we've all seen them and she's always pushed through and she comes out the other end but there's so many great athletes out there that I follow that it's hard to name a few but they're definitely some of the top two that I really do look up to. Now I completely almost forget to ask this question which is do you have Do you have a top five highlights throughout your athlete's journey? Um, One of my top one, I think my top one will probably be uh, my two national medals that I've won, especially my first one. I worked extremely hard for it. I never saw it coming. It just popped down in front of me and I grabbed it. And that was just, you know, it was just amazing. I worked hard and it finally was one of my first rewards in senior athletics that I really felt like I'd worked extremely hard for. Very close to that would be representing Australia in PG when I finally got to wear the green and gold and represent Australia properly for the very first time. And then my three trips to Simplot representing Maribyrnong and Australia, well, Simplot Australia as well. And being able to travel to America and do one of their biggest indoor high school comps was one of my biggest highlights as well. <laughs> it's hard to name a few, there's been so many, but they're definitely my top ones. Now I have to, Obviously, we mentioned about Western athletes. Obviously, we're here at the Narrabinong Sports Academy, uh, here at Narrabinong College. How important has this academy been to, towards, I guess, where you want to reach? Being at a sports academy is just huge. The amount of flexibility they give me with my studies and with school, so uh, with my studies and with athletics by managing my timetable so I can do some less subjects and do some early so I have more study time and then I can train in some of that study time has been a huge help. It means I can try to achieve my best academically because I really do value my academics and it also means I can train and become the best sporting person that I can become, hopefully. So... They've just been a huge help with the flexibility and the support they give not only me but all the other athletes here is just huge. Now let's get to know a little bit about you uh, off the track. Um, favourite colour? Well favourite colour is probably red. It used to be pink but it's definitely red now. <laughs> Love it. Uh, that's one of mine. Um, favourite um, movie? Oh, movies are really hard. I've always loved, it's a bit weird, but I've always loved The Grinch since I was a kid. It's just a fun kids movie. It was a little bit scary at the time, but I just always love it. It's just an old classic that I'm always happy to sit down and watch. Favourite uh, artist? Artist or oh, Imagine Dragons. They're not really an artist, they're more of a band, yeah. but I definitely love Imagine Dragons. Their music is really meaningful and, you know, really some of them are you know, give you a good of a pump up. Some of them are a bit down, but they're just really deep and meaningful, which is really enjoyable to listen to. Now, which follows up on my next question. Favourite song? Uh, Demons by Imagine Dragons. <laughs> I just loved it. Um, that's always been one that I've always listened to and connect well to. So it just really means a lot, that one. I'm assuming that is the most played song on your playlist? Probably. <laughs> I'd say so. I don't really know what the most played one was. My phone's usually on shuffle, but yeah, yeah that'd be close to it, I reckon. Uh, favorite destination that you have been or would love to go to? Ooh, I'd really love to go to Greece and Rome, but um, I haven't been there so far. My favorite destination, I reckon, has been Disneyland. It's just <laughs> 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 Disneyland in California. California is an amazing place. Disneyland is just so magical and amazing to go to. It's hard to believe until you're there, but that, yeah. yeah. That's definitely, I would love to go to Greece and Rome, but out of the places I've been to, Disneyland is just unbeatable. Yeah. Uh, if you didn't compete in the sport of athletics, which sport would you be competing at right now? Um, oh, that's a hard one. 
I don't know, some people have told me maybe I should do rowing. So I might have given rowing a go or even judo, which is a bit strange, but it's run in the family. So I might have gone in that direction. Mm -hmm. But it could also have been something to do with running. I've always loved my running. So maybe triathlons or something like that as could have been in as well. But I'm not really sure, to be honest with you. That's a interesting question. I could have gone into a few different things, I reckon, but they're probably the top three that I might have gone. Now, I have to ask this question, being, a, I guess, a footy city, uh, of course, uh, favourite AFL team? Uh, follow the dogs, sort of by default, because my family goes for them, but, you know, I've followed them since I was a kid, had a few memberships and been to a few games, so definitely Bulldog supporter. Do you have a favourite footy player, uh, Bulldogs player? Oh, not really a favourite <laughs> Bulldogs player. Don't watch it that often to have a Bulldogs player, but uh, yeah, no, nah, probably not. Yeah. Um, now, favourite hobby outside of athletics? Ooh, I love reading. I'm really big into books. I, my dream is having a library in my house when I'm older, but I love reading. I've always got a book around me or an e-book, whatever I can find and read, I'll mm. definitely take that. Uh, which follows on my next question, favourite book? Favourite book? Uh, probably the series called The Mortal Instruments by Cassandra Clare. That's probably been one of my favourite series so far that I've read. Uh, other than that, probably the Inkheart series was really amazing too, that I really enjoyed that one. Do you have a favourite author? Favourite author? Probably Rick Riordan. So he makes all the Percy Jackson books and I've read nearly all of his series. So he's one of my other favourite book series is the Percy Jackson one and he's probably my favourite author. He just makes some really good books or even um, J.K. Rowling with the Harry Potter books are a classic and yes. I love those. You can't go past those. There's so many books. Uh, favourite TV show? Supernatural. I love Supernatural. <laughs> I'm still finishing it off because there's 13 seasons, but I've, yeah, I've really enjoyed that one. That's so, out of all the shows I've watched, I reckon that one's been my favourite. Uh, I have to ask why? Oh, it's just, it's just thrilling. It's sort of like the adrenaline rush that I sort of get from competing. <laughs> they get from doing their own sort of hobby and it's just, you know, all the mythical stuff and it just gets pretty interesting. And yeah, it's just a gripping TV show. Favourite drink? Drink. Oh, I like water. <laughs> I don't really drink much aside from water. I've had the odd soft drink and stuff. Don't drink alcohol. Yep. But, um, yeah, I love water. <laughs> now, um, two final ones before I let you go, um, which is, I guess, obviously you mentioned about um, being a, your future goals was obviously to hopefully represent our country in the Olympic Games. Um do you have a, like a set goal where you, hopefully you want to get to that level? Um, it's not exactly set in stone because there's a lot of ways I have to go around to get there and a lot of teams that I'll try to make along the way. And with athletics, it's not one of those things, you know, I could miss all these other world teams but then still make the Olympics. So it's basically just improving. I want to keep improving each event and slowly the better I get in each event, the more points I get in a heptathlon, the more points I get, the closer I get to that Olympic qualifier. So mm -hmm. the goal at the moment is just to keep improving each of my seven events and see how good I can get them and see how many points I can accumulate over two days and go from there. One last one. Um, how special was, is it to be part of the Smash FM family as an ambassador? It's just amazing. It's such a privilege to be able to be here and speak to you and even to get my name and even Smash FM names out there. It's just, it's truly an honour and a privilege to represent you and do all of this. It's really amazing for me and something that I don't get to do very often. So I get to learn from it and be a part of the experience, which is great fun. And I'm really privileged to be here. Well, Stella, thank you so much for joining us. It's awesome having you as uh, one of our ambassadors and uh, I'm sure you, you're doing us pretty proud at the moment. So uh, thanks so much. Best of luck uh, for the rest of 2018 and beyond and can't wait to see uh, where, where it all goes. Thanks so much for having me. It's my pleasure and I can't wait to see where this takes us. No worries. Well, of course, uh, well, that is Jamison there from Western Athletics and, of course, from here at the Narrabadong Sports Academy. Of course, uh, there's more on the Smash... FM uh, Ambassador Profile, it's right after this. Welcome everyone out here, of course, with the Smash FM Ambassador Profile out here at the Narrabadong uh, Sports Academy here, of course, interviewing our uh, Smash FM Ambassador for the Sport of Athletics, of course, and she's from the Western Athletes, as, as well as part of the Narrabadong Sports Academy, and she, she joins us now to tell us a bit of a demonstration. Hi, 
my name is Jamison Battistella and today I'm showing you one of my events from the Heptathlon which is the hurdles. don't have all the hurdles set up but I will be showing you my block start and over the first hurdle. For my block start I have a setup where I go one foot from the line, then I go one foot to the first hurdle, to well, about one foot, and then to the, to the first block zone, and from the first block I go one shoe, on both feet, then I get ready, I'll take off and jump over the first hurdle. The aim with hurdles is you want to get there as quick as you can and you want to get over it as quick as possible without really touching the hurdle because it slows you down, but you also want to make sure you're pretty close to it to make sure you get maximum speed. So off I go.